Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. And by the Committee of 100 for the Ozark Folk Center, preserving Ozark folk culture since 1974 through music roots, craft apprenticeships, and the Heritage Herb Garden. Learn more at ofc100.org. <laughs> Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. This week, we'll hear highlights of the very first season of Ozark Highlands Radio, featuring a variety of outstanding performers recorded live at the Ozark Folk Center State Park. Also, we have a rare recording of our legendary vault keeper, Mark Jones, playing the banjo, and Dr. Brooks Blevins profiles Alameda Riddle, the voice of the Ozarks. That's this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Ozark Highlands Radio's first season began in January of 2016. Jeff Glover and I have been here from the start, always on the lookout for music from a variety of talented musicians. Today, we've brought Jeff out of the vault into the light of day. Welcome, Jeff, to the outside world. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to be here, Dave. Uh, yeah, um, you know, I, I had planned to do a retrospective show of the entire show for New Year's this year. But then I got to going through season one and realized that there's just way too much material for that. So I decided to just kind of do a look back at season one and and just pull out the best of the best for that season. Well, that'll be great. It's been so long, I can't even remember what we had on season I, you one. You know, likewise, and once I got to going through all that stuff, I realized what a treasure trove it was. Starting off our season at the Folk Center almost every year in the past has been the Merle Travis Thumb Picking Weekend. That's right. And uh, there's a guy who uh, was Merle Travis's own son who was here for many, many, many years. That would have to be Tom Bresh. Exactly. Yeah. That is Tom Bresh. You know, listening to Tom, there's proof that talent gets passed on through the jeans because this guy can really pick the guitar oh he's every bit as good as his father every single bit and here he is tom bresh doing uh the streets of bordeaux oh gosh i can't wait to hear it Thank you. 
Yeah, that's Tom, all right. Man, what a picker. That guy can sure play, can't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Son of Merle Travis and was here for years and years. Tom's passed on now, uh, but we miss him. We miss him. Next up, we have uh, Aubrey Atwater and her husband, Elwood. Uh, you know, we used to have, and we still do, have a dulcimer gathering at the beginning of every season. Uh, and Aubrey, being a great dulcimer player, dancer, musician, she educator. She does it all. She's even a guest host on this show. That's right. She does it all. This is her and her husband doing their rendition of a, a very old ballad called The Blackest Crow. Okay. The Blackest Crow Bright day would turn to night, my love. The elements would mourn if ever I proved false to you. The seas would rage and burn. I wish my heart were made of glass wherein you might behold that there your name was written dear in letters made of gold in That's Aubrey and Elwood, all right. What great musicians they are. They, they, they come a long way to play here because they live in the, the state of Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Providence, yeah. yeah. Yeah, long way off. What do we got next? Yeah, let's see what you got here. Oh, this is uh, Will Merring and Robert Bowen, a couple of really good musicians from southern Illinois. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's a terrific songwriter. Yeah, she wrote this song based on the traditional St. Anne's Reel. That's right. It's called A Dance to the St. Anne's Reel. Let's hear it. Get out your fiddle and the mandolin, Tony. 
heel to a tune like it's always been. Take a peck on the cheek. She takes her hand for a dance to the St. Anne's reel. The shuffle of her shoes on the wooden floor as they twirl to a tune from another shore. The song come down from the days of yore. It's a tune called the St. Young man's son had a son now old who rests on the bench as his own son holds the hand of the girl with the hair of gold for a dance to the St. Anne's Reel. The stranger land his home, sweet home, and no one recalls where the tune came from. They still gather around when the work's all done for a dance to the St. Anne's Reel. Always been take a peck on the cheek. She takes her hand for a dance to the St. Anne's reel. The shuffle of her shoes on the wooden floor as they twirl to a tune from another shore. The song come down from the days of yore. It's a tune called the St. Anne's reel. The song come down from the days. Boy, that Robert's some picker, too, isn't he? He is. Boy, that guy is something. He plays everything. He does. He does. Yeah. And he's good at all of it. Yes, he is. Yeah. What's next? Well, let's see. What is next? Uh, looks like we have... Oh, well, I'll be darned. We have a recording of our very own Dave Smith, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you have done this song over the years several times, and I've just fallen in love with it. It's one of the most beautiful ballads I've ever heard, and I love it every single time you play it. You know which one I'm talking yeah, about. I do. It's one of my most requested songs and one of my favorites as well. Written by a guy named Bob Amos, uh, who has a bluegrass band in Colorado called Front Range. And some friends of ours in uh, Colorado sent me this song, and they said, this might be one you want to learn. And my wife and I sat at the kitchen table and listened to a cassette tape of it, and we both had tears in our eyes at the end of it. It's just one of those great songs. Indeed it is. Here's Dave Smith doing Mr. Beeford's Barn. Here we go. August 1969, after evening chores We went to see who stood outside knocking on our door An old man stood there quietly, his hat held in his hand He said, I'd like to have a minute of your time You see, my dad and I Built that barn in 1899 He said his name was Beeford As we walked across the field And he told us how they'd raised the frame Without a single nail Just wooden pegs was all it took To make those timbers stand Then he said as his eyes looked far away Mr. Beeford's barn still stands on our farm Where it stood a hundred years before Solid as the rock that it was built upon It will stand a hundred years more how they'd moved down south in 1921 where farming was much easier and the winters not as long but he made a promise to himself to see the barn again once more before his life was done then he 
shook our hands and drove away into the setting sun. Late that night I gazed out of the window by my bed And out across the meadow while the moon shone overhead The old barn stood there silver like a sentry in the night Once more I heard the old man say Build it right and it will last forever Mr. Beeford's barn still stands on our farm Where it stood a hundred years before Solid as the rock that it was built upon It will stand a hundred years more Solid as the rock that it was built upon it will stand a hundred years more Thank you, folks. Oh, I love thank that you. one, Dave. Great job once yeah, again. Thank you very much. That is a dandy song. You can't go wrong with a good song like that. Yeah, and to close this one out, a traditional band like there's never been here before, the Lazy Goat String Band. <laughs> yeah. Guitar, banjo, and fiddle. Yeah, what tune are they doing here? I can't remember. Uh, this says John Brown's Dream. Boy, they knock it out, too. I can't wait to hear it. John Brown's Dream by the Lazy Goat String Band. <laughs> That's a dandy one, isn't it? Yeah, oh, yeah. those guys are great. Yeah. I guess a... we need to take a break now, right? Let's do that. Let's take a break. And when we come back, let's see what you found in the vault for this week. I think it has something to do with our old vault keeper, Mark Jones. Mark Jones. Okay, you're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. We'll be back. That's probably, I can't say it that way, can I? You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Generally, every week about this time, I go down into the vault to visit with my buddy Mark Jones. But I'm down here today, and there's no Mark. I don't know where he is, but there's nobody down here. So this kind of gives me a chance to do something I've been wanting to do for a while. Let's see. Uh, e, e, F, G, J. Here they are, J. 
Mark Jones. A lot of people don't know it, but not only is Mark a fine sound engineer, but he's also a darn good musician. For years, he played the bass with his dad, Grandpa Jones, on the road, and he's also a terrific five-string banjo player. He plays the old frailing or claw hammer style, and I have found a recording of him from way back, probably in 1973. Let's see. It's the Arkansas Traveler. Let's listen to Mark Jones playing the Arkansas Traveler. So this is going to be a first. <laughs> uh, it's called Arkansas Traveler. That was Mark Jones. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, here he comes. Hey, Dave, I'm glad you're down here. Mark, you caught me rifling around in your stuff down here. Well, it's some good stuff to rifle around in. Well, look at what I've been playing. Look look at this tune I found. Uh, well, where'd you find that? Well, yeah, it was kind of back here in this old dusty corner under the J's. Under the J's. That's well, right. that's where it ought to be, <laughs> I guess. Do you remember playing the Arkansas Traveler back then? Dave, I sure do. That was probably one of the first performances all solo. You know, like flying without a net or anything. <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I, I think I did okay, but... You did really well. It sounded great. Well, thank you, sir. You're still playing the banjo, too, aren't you? Yes, sir, I, I am. I'm not near as much as I want to, I guess. I just... Uh, you kind of get other things going in your life, and the things that you're really interested in kind of seem to fall by the wayside a little bit, but... I'm here at the Folk Center, and I enjoy that, and I get to hear a lot of good banjo players, too. Well, that was great hearing you play, Mark. Hey, and I'll see you again next week, okay? Thank you, Dave. Well, Jeff, here we are playing music from uh, Season 1. Season 1. Uh, what else have you got here for us? This is a song called Welcome as the Flowers in May. It's an original song written by Cindy Wolfe who is married, as you know, to Mark Ballou, very, very noteworthy folk musicians from Springfield, Missouri. They've been on the show many, many times as the Creek Rocks. That's right. They're the Creek Rocks. And he was a founding member of Big Smith, which Big is a Smith. terrific old-time string band from up around Springfield, Missouri. That's absolutely right. So here's Welcome as the Flowers in May by Cindy Wolf and Mark Ballou. Yeah. 
that stream won't let you go Drifting along For you know You won't have no seas to sow Oh, it's always gonna flow Oh, it's always gonna flow And they mean all wrong Turn You know, that's another great song, isn't it? Oh, those guys are great. Yeah, they I are. love that one. Yeah. Mark is a terrific guitar player, too. That guy can make it walk and talk. He really, really can, yeah. What do we got? Oh, uh, let's see. How about uh, how about one by Malcolm Holcomb and Jared Tyler? You know, I loved this guy. He was an odd guy. He We <laughs> get, we brought him all the way over here from North Carolina. He's in this uh, vein of outlaw country music you know yeah now nowadays they call it americana <laughs> right right but just a great songwriter and a great performer here he is doing don't you miss that water his steps a boat up in the hurricane chimes to the wind kicking up in the sun beating Side bone dry in the valley. Nobody smiles but the rich in the alley. Don't you miss that water when it's gone? Don't you miss that water when it's gone? Say now, rich in the alley, free in the gutter. Take a drink to the past and pray for another. Holding on in the corner where the slapping flies. To the cries of the crows in the lonesome sky. Don't you miss that water when it's gone. Don't you 
miss that water when it's gone? Don't you miss that water when it's gone, Lord knows. Don't you miss that water when it's gone? You think about me when the sun goes down. The stars are raising up all over this town. Lord knows I'm lost in the heat burning round and round. Don't you miss that water when it's gone? Don't you miss that water when it's gone? Don't you miss that water? Gone. Don't you miss that water when it's gone? Oh, don't you miss that water when it's gone? Another great song. Yeah, yeah. Great songwriter, yeah. great performer, that guy. That's right. Malcolm Holcomb doing Don't You Miss That Water. Yeah, well, I had forgotten about those guys from way back in 1960. Yeah, it's been a while. 2016. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey, what about the Clark family? Oh, the, how could we have anything on season one without including a, t- yeah. a tune by the Clark family? That's right. Yeah. We have the Clark family here doing a, a tune called The Wolf.
Another great song. The, the Clarks are just have such great harmony. That's uh, that's Cindy Clark and her two daughters, I'll bet, as mm-hmm. the Clark family. And maybe any of their boys in this one? No. Bill Nesbitt's playing guitar on Oh, that's right. Yep. They are quite the f- musical family, those Clarks. They are something, yeah. yeah. Oh, next we, <laughs> next we have, this one's always tickled me. During the Dulcimer Fest, we had this guy come up from Mississippi named Jeff Hames. Oh, yeah. Who's a world champion Dulcimer player and fantastic. <laughs> He's put together his own version of Sweet Child of Mine by Guns N' Roses. Wow. and performs it on a Dulcimer. That's something you don't hear very often. You don't hear that very often <laughs> at all. Yeah, check it out. Sure enough, that's Jeff Hames playing Sweet Child of Mine. Who'd have thought? Guns and Roses right here on the yeah. folk show. Well, it'll be an old-time song someday, won't it? <laughs> it will be. It yeah. will be, yep. Let's uh, let's take another break for a little while. When we come back, let's see who we got for a guest segment this week. Absolutely. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Brooks Blevins is a pretty popular guy around here. He's an author. He's written several books about the Ozarks. He's a folklorist. He's a college instructor. And he's a pretty good friend of ours as well. Here he is this week profiling famous ballad singer Almeda Riddle. Twas in the town of Oxford where I did live and If the Ozarks had a voice... This is what it would sound like. Down of Oxford, I run a flower if the glades and hollers and ridges sing, if the white oaks on the hillsides choired, this would be their voice. For those who discovered the sounds of traditional Ozark music in the 1960s and 70s, Almeda Riddle was the voice of the Ozarks. 
Her voice echoes back the craggy patience, the stolid humility of these ancient hills. It reverberates with a lifetime of labor and loss. It emanates from a place of suffering and triumph and hope, with a spirit as old as the ballad she carried forth from ancestors long forgotten. Almeida took to the stage dozens, if not hundreds, of times in her Mother Hubbard dress and bonnet. Like her fellow granny singers in the folk revival, long before she sang at Harvard and Berkeley and Newport, she was discovered. In 1952, Memphis English professor and folk song collector John Quincy Wolfe Jr. visited one of Riddle's neighbors in rural Cleburne County, Arkansas, a neighbor who had responded to one of Wolfe's newspaper ads in his search for old ballads. Almeida stopped by to see what a professor looked like. She told Wolf that she knew more than a hundred old songs by heart, and later, after sending him a list of them, assured the professor that she could list a hundred more. In the months and years that followed, the two of them struck up a correspondence that blossomed into a friendship. Wolf made dozens of recordings of Almeida in the 1950s and introduced her to Alan Lomax, who recorded her for his album Ozark Frontier, the seventh volume in his Southern Journeys series. The folk revival of the 60s gave Almeida the chance for a career that would allow her to supplement the few dollars she made from caring for the housebound elderly and taking in sewing. With Wolf's guidance and encouragement, she became a fixture on the festival circuit into the 1980s. Though formerly uneducated, Almeida's quick mind and boundless curiosity led her to become something of a noted amateur folklorist herself. In her two decades of notoriety, she recorded albums, collaborated with folklorist Roger Abrahams on a book about her life and music entitled A Singer and Her Songs, and starred in a TV documentary. It was not a life that anyone would have predicted when Almeida James was born into the world in an Ozark timber boomtown in 1898. Raised in a musical family, she learned shape notes from her father, J.L. James, a timberman and later farmer, who occasionally taught singing schools. Almeida got married as a teenager to H.P. Riddle, and by her 28th birthday, the couple had four small children. Four days later, on Thanksgiving Day, 1926, a tornado raged through Heber Springs, Arkansas, killing 17 people, including Almeida's husband and infant child. Every possession she had in the world, including her ballad collection, was destroyed. Almeida and her two sons were wounded so badly in the storm that they spent the whole winter in a hospital. She never remarried but raised her three surviving children on the strength of her own hard work and determination through depression and world war. The great lady of Ozark balladry, as the National Endowment for the Humanities dubbed her decades later, never stopped singing through those difficult years, and she continued to learn new songs, or at least songs that were new to her, from ancient child ballads to Tin Pan Alley ditties, all of which she committed to her steel trap memory before beginning her ballad books anew after her children were grown and gone from home. So extensive were these books that it took a career of 25 years to get out the old songs as she described her singing at festivals and college campuses. It was more than three decades ago that Almeida Riddle took the stage for the final time at the age of 85, right here at the Ozark Folk Center. Accompanied by Mike Seeger, she sang an old camp meeting song, From Jerusalem to Jericho. Her plaintive, oaken voice was silenced two years later. But her songs live on in the memories of those who saw Almeida sing and in hundreds of recordings, a solid legacy for the voice of the Ozarks. From this burning, burning, burning hell that's burning in my breast. Thank you, Brooks. As you know, I'm here with Jeff Glover this week, and we're going over a retrospective of our first season at Ozark Highlands Radio back in 2016. Uh, Jeff, have you got anything by Brian Bowers on the program here? Absolutely, Dave. You know, we had uh, you know auto harp gathering. Yes. Here that, that year. And, uh, of course, Brian Bowers is one of the greatest auto harp players that's ever been. Absolutely. Know? And a fantastic singer as well. And uh, one of his signature tunes that he does is called Banks of Pontchartrain. It's about Lake Pontchartrain in New Orleans. And it's just a heartbreaking ballad. And Brian, of course, has a fantastic, rich voice. That's right. And a great delivery. 
and a great yeah, delivery. What a singer. Yeah, and here he is doing Banks of Pontchartrain.
by the lakes Oh, that's a great song. And that guy can sure sing it, can't he? Does a great, great yeah, job. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I haven't seen him in a while now. I hope he's still traveling around. That guy drives everywhere, all over the country. He drives to festivals and shows. I, yeah, I could see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of banks, um, we've got another song about a bank here, don't we? We do. We we have Lucas and Eden Poole, a couple of our local kids that made good. Absolutely, a couple of they're both my favorites. They're both. Uh, graduates of the Berkeley School of Music in Boston. So they're terrific musicians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, living here now, making banjos. As That's a right. Matter of fact. Yeah, and got a couple of kids, just a beautiful family. And uh, in this recording, they're doing a compilation a medley of two tunes, starting out with one called Liffy Banks, and the other one is a traditional fiddle tune called uh, Garfield's Blackberry Blossom. Oh, yeah, great tune. Yeah, yeah, here we go. Thank you. 
Annette Eden is some fiddler, isn't she? Uh, both those kids are fantastic. Yeah, they are. Uh, Lucas is probably the best climber banjo player in the country, I suppose. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. Fantastic yeah. player and making beautiful banjos as the Ozark Banjo Company. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, thanks, Dave. You bet. It's been great going over these songs with you, Jeff. Yeah, season one was, was quite a year. We've got many more seasons to go over, and it'll be fun going over those as well. But yeah, first season, season one, what a treasure trove of material. Yeah. And thanks to you all for listening to our show again this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And remember, we'll be back next week with another episode of Ozark Highlands Radio. This is your host, Dave Smith. Y'all have a great week. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from Arkansas State Parks, a division of the Arkansas Department of Parks, Heritage, and Tourism, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. The Committee of 100 proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. And by Stone Bank with roots in Mountain View, Arkansas. Stone Bank is a proud supporter of heritage musicians and small towns across America with government guaranteed loans for farmers, entrepreneurs, and communities. More information available at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar. Mm-hmm.